Welcome to the Dragon's Realm Interactive Program. This is the program that you're going to complete and we're going to try and do it in two days. Here we have our intro. I'm going to click on Start Game and you're going to see some random caves show up. This one had a dragon inside and I lost already. You can click on New Game. I'm going to get the intro again. My global variables are being reset. And if I start the game, I'm going to see my caves. This time trolls stole my coins. I didn't have any to steal. Trolls stole my coins again. I gathered five coins. Five. That one was empty. Six. Seven. And I won. So this is going to be the basic game that we're working on. I've added a lot of extra things using iterative development. You're going to be doing a basic game and then you're welcome, of course, to add all these extras that you might want to add to make the game your own. First, let's talk about the algorithm. And when the game first starts, even before I click a button, there's some things that have to happen kind of behind the scenes. You want to determine the number of coins to win. Now, when you're first programming this, you might want to just set the coins and set it kind of low so you can really um, do some good testing. So you might want to, before you make it random, just set a number and then you can always go back and make it random. We're going to be using a program, uh, we're going to be using a variable for this status. This is going to be similar to the level that we used way back at the beginning when we first did our Dragon Round program. We use levels to determine which buttons. But we're going to use a status so we kind of know where we are in the game and that way the computer is going to know what it should be displaying. So we are going to be setting a status. We're going to start it at 1 for the intro. We're going to be kind of moving the status around, determining where we are in the game. So this is a really handy way of using variables to, do, to help keep track of what you're doing in a game. And of course, we want to display the intro. Now, when I actually click on the Start Game button, then I'm going to need to really do a lot of work. I need to, to determine how many caves I have. And each cave needs a position, and each cave needs a number that's going to be associated with the coins. And then you're going to have to come up with basically your own legend. This is how I did it. I'm, zero was an empty cave. A one meant you had the dragon. A two meant trolls were there. And anything from three on up was that number of coins that you got. Now this is just my way of doing it. And this is something that you'll want to determine when you do your own game. Then I have to do a mouse click. This is going to be some new code right here that I'm going to give you. How do you know if you're actually clicking on an image? You want to display the results, so if I clicked on it, I want to know what um, was stored in it. You know, was it a dragon? Was it trolls? Was it coins? And I also want to do a wait. So this is going to be kind of like a timer. It's going to be some new code that I'm going to give you as well. So knowing how to do a mouse click and knowing how to do a wait are two really handy functions that you can use in games that you might want to use later on. Then, of course, you want to check to see if you win or lose and display that message. And then once you get around to it, you know, this is fairly simple is to click on it to program the new game button, which basically just means resetting your global variables, you know, including the status and displaying your intro. So, you know, that's going to be like the last step in that, you know, by then it should be the easiest thing to do. So you can click on the link in the document and get started with the template. And it's going to start just like this. Let's just talk about what we've got going on here. Of course, we're going to be importing simple GUI, random, and time. We're going to use this for our wait timer. And here's the picture information for the cave that you are welcome to use. If you want to get your own image and work on the size, that's fine with me. Uh, this one is already there, and you can use it, uh, especially just for testing purposes. So you don't want to waste a lot of time finding a picture and getting it to work. Uh, you want to test your code. And then change the picture, that's something that you can always do as part of your iterative development. Now we're going to use two lists. And they're both going to be for the cave. The first one is going to be for the position. You might have noticed that my caves are always just in a row. And so the Y is going to stay the same, so I'm going to keep it on the same row. Now you could make that one random so your caves could kind of be all over the place. And I'll let, leave that to you as an option, certainly something you can do for iterative, iterative development. For right now, we're just going to keep it in a row. So I've set my Y to always be at 150, but my X position is going to change. You know, and I already know the size of my cave, so it's going to help me know about how far over I need to go each time. I'm going to store this in a list so I know I can keep track of my cave with the items that are stored in it. I know the position and the items, and this is going to be determined by index. 
is going to be a really important thing when it comes to our mouse click. So I'm going to have two lists. Uh, this is going to be the exposition of the cave, and then this is going to be what's stored in it. Is it a zero, which means it's empty? Is it a one? Is it a dragon? You know, that kind of thing. I need to keep track of the coins, so this is going to be my counter. But instead of calling a counter, I'm going to call it coins because this is what I um, pick up when I go in the caves. And then the status I was talking to you about earlier, this is going to help me keep track of where I am in the game. And then when I use the timer, so as basically a wait, wait cycle, I need, to keep, I need a variable to keep track of the old time to compare to the new. So these are going to be all important and global variables, and we'll add a few more as we go. Okay. And then we're going to be filling in a lot of these functions as we go, and then we're also going to be adding some new ones. So I've just got a label here. I've, I've got my frame. I've just got two buttons. We are going to have a mouse click handler. So this one is something that's fairly new. We haven't really done mouse clicks before, um, but it needs a, a function just like the buttons need a function. So the button functions are new game and start game. And for a mouse click, I'm going to have get it because I basically want to know, did I get a cave? Did I click on what I was thinking I was clicking on? And then, of course, we have our draw handler. So my get it is right here, determining if a cave was clicked on. And I'm going to help you with this code. I'm going to help you with the wait code because that's going to be new. If you choose to use this code later, like in your game for your performance test or anything, that's fine. You're always welcome to reuse code, but you should be giving me credit okay? because this isn't going to be code that you write unless you don't want to use this part of the video and you want to write your own. And that's great too. But if you are using this code, and you want to reuse it later, anytime you're using somebody else's code, you want to make sure that you give them credit. Okay, that's important that you're not plagiarizing. So let's just run this program. And right away, you're going to get just the intro. We're going to be adding on to the intros. We're going to follow the algorithm and just expand on our code here. So right now, it's a very basic intro. It just says that you're in the forest and that you see several caves. It doesn't even tell you how many coins you need to get. So if we take a look at our algorithm, one of the first things we did here was determine the number of coins to win. So we can do that by just, you know, if we want to set the number and then make it random later, that's kind of what my, I would recommend. But, so we need a variable for this. We're going to call it our goal. So we have goal versus coins is what we're going to be comparing. You might even want to put it up there next to the coins if you want to, if that will help you. But we're going to have our goal, and I'm just going to set it at 10 right now. But this is something where, I, and I'm going to put a little comment here that I would change this to a random number. Once you know everything is working correctly. Now I can take this number and I can add some more lines into my intro that would say something like you need to collect coins. So right now it's you're in the Enchanted Forest and you see... Um, several caves in front of you. Okay, and then you might want to say something like, add some more draw text, um, go inside the caves and collect coins. You must collect so many coins to win. Okay, so I'm going to, you can stop the video right now, and I want you to add in some more draw text. Do you know how to do this? You don't need my help. You know, just keep going. Make sure that you're changing the position. So this one started at, um, this was just the name, the title. So I was at position 4050. And this is my actual lines of code. So I was at 2080 and then 2100. So you can kind of keep going with the pattern. Next one would be 2120, you know, so on and so forth. So add in a few more lines of code. Flesh out your introduction a little bit more. Okay, so I've added on to my intro. When I run the program now, this is the intro that I get. So hopefully yours looks something similar. So I've added in how many coins that you need and click start game to begin. So I've got my button over here. Of course, if I click it, nothing happens yet. Um, but let's just take a look at our algorithm. So the first thing was to determine number of coins to win. We've got that right now. We just set it and we can change that to a random number. So I'm going to highlight that we've done this part. Okay, and we'll set the status. We want to start it at one. Okay. Come over here. I've got it set at, as a global variable at one. And then I want to display the intro. So all of that is happening, but let's show how the status is helping the intro actually be displayed. 
So if we look again at our code, we've got one as our status. And I'm going to come down here to my draw handler, and it's always just been all of our code right here. But now if you take a look at my draw handler, I'm going to use my status to help me know which of these different functions that I want to display. I'm going to pass in canvas as an argument into this particular function, and it's going to display this code. Now, once I change my status, I'll be able to display some different code. So this one has a whole bunch of my draw texts in here. All of them are going to have draw texts in here, passing in canvas, but I can display different things with my draw text this way without having to worry about erasing things or whatever. So my status is going to come in handy. It's going to determine which of these I will be displaying. And when I have a win or loss, the status will come in handy for that too. So I can add in more functions that display on the canvas. I can have a show win and I can have a show loss. So when we come here to our algorithm, we've completed the first three parts. Now we're going to work on our start game. First I want to get a random number of caves, and then I'm going to be um, in a loop. I'm going to use I'm going to use a loop and my index to um, set the position and also fill each cave with a number. So I can do both of these things in one loop. So it's going to come in really handy. Now, as a matter of fact, this is all that we're going to do on our game click uh, when we start the game. Everything else is going to happen um, when we actually click on the cave. So we're only going to do steps four and five in our start game. So let's get started on that. We're back here at our code. And we're going to come up here to start game. And notice that I've actually already coded it for you. All we're going to do is set the caves and we're going to change our status. So I had to make a couple of things global here. Remember that X position is a list and also items. Now we could put items up here if we want to because we're going to be changing it. Um, it's not super important right there, uh, but we're going to have our items in our X position, our two lists, then we're going to be setting them up in our set caves. We also change the status so that we're no longer showing the intro, but we're going to be showing something else instead. So let's come here into our um, set caves. This is one of our handler functions and right now we just have a pass. And what we want to do is use a loop to um, actually set up the caves. So our code is going to look like this. Just unindent here. We're going to need to um, make global our two lists and then right now I've got a random number. Let's just put a number in there like three or four. Let's just set a, a number there so as we're testing it, we can know that it works right. And then this is something that we will change. I'll just put a little comment here. So once we know it works, we'll change to a random number. So I'll have a different number of caves each time. But here's my index. So this is like my counter, but I'm putting in my end for index because this is going to be, I'm going to be accessing both lists here. And I'm going to use my range for my num cave, so it's going to go 0, but in this case it's going to go 0 to 2. Okay, so keep that in mind. So I'm going to be appending, and the program that I showed you before, we already set the program. We, we filled it with zeros, but this time we're just going to be appending. So I'm going to take my index, so I'm going to start at 0, I'm going to multiply it by 70, and then add 5. This is going to be the position. So the first cave is going to start with x at 50. Then the next cave is going to go 70 plus 50. The next cave is going to go 70 past that and then 70 past that. I set 70 because of the size of the picture. The picture is 62 pixels, so I'm going over 70. So the caves are fairly close together. But this is just a, a quick little algorithm that's going to position my caves just a little bit apart. And I set the plus 50 because I didn't want it right at the edge. Um, that was a little awkward, so I needed to kind of offset it a little bit. And so just with a little bit of a trial and error, 50 worked pretty good. And this is a number that you can kind of manipulate, but all this does really is take it away from the edge. And then this, multiplying the index by a number, uh, is just going to be setting the position of all of my caves. So this is the first list, and my second list is the items. And what I want to do is just get a random number, and I just picked 0 to 8. This is the range that you want to pick from. I had 0 being the empty cave, a 1 being a dragon, a 2 being trolls, and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 would all be coins. So that makes the game fairly simple to win because there's a lot of coins there. So you can either like change um, how you want to set the numbers. Maybe you want 7, 8 to be the dragon and the troll instead. 
um, or maybe you want a smaller number here to make the game more difficult. That's going to be for you to decide. But I'm going to pick a random number and save it into each cave, basically. So at, at, at cave 0, this is going to be the position. This is when it's going to be stored in it. I'm going to do it for cave 2, and I'm going to do it for cave 3. So with just this one simple loop here, I'm setting up the position and what goes inside each cave randomly uh, every time I get a new game, every time I set the caves. And that's all there is to it. So that if we look back at our algorithm, we've just done both of these things right here. So I can highlight them that they are done. Now you know you should always test as you go and you want to make sure that your code is working before you add anything more. So that's good incremental development. So let's go back and run what we've got so far. And your intro is working. And when you click on start game, nothing happens. Now you might be wondering, why is this? Why does nothing happen when you click on start game? Well, one thing you might recall is that we in start game, we set the status equals to 2. And in our draw handler, we only have something if status equals equals 1. What do we want to happen if status equals 2? We want to show the caves. So let's go ahead and add some code here and display our caves. So we're going to have elif status equals equals 2. Then notice that we've got a function here called show caves. So now this is something that's really different that we haven't done before, but this is so handy. It just shows you the, the variety of different ways you can use the canvas. And so instead of just putting everything here, which we've done before, just a whole bunch of draw texts, I can have my draw texts in different functions and just call the one that I want at any given time. So if the status is 2, I want to show my case. Let's do the code for show caves. I must pass in canvas as an argument here. It needs to be able to access the canvas object. And then all I need to do is a loop. So remember, um, my caves have an X position in a list. And I don't even care about the items at this point. I just want to be able to display the caves. And so I'm going to use a loop for this. And I'm going to use my index. Okay, and then I'm going to use my len, and I can use the length of the um, items or the x position, but I'm going to go ahead and put the x position here. Okay, and then what do I want to do? I simply want to um, display my image. So we've got the we've done this kind of thing before, but it's been a long time, so I'm just going to give you the code of how to display this image. Okay, so instead of a draw text, we're going to have a draw image, and then we're going to have the picture, and then all this information has to be there. Here's the position of the picture. So notice I've got Y here, which is always 150, and I've got the index. So this is going to be um, cave 0, and then cave 1, and cave 2. So I'm using the list and the index of that list and the image size. So this is going to draw my caves in just one nice, neat loop. So it doesn't matter how many caves I have. Uh, the loop will adjust because I've got the position right here, and that's how many caves it will draw. So let's go ahead and give this a, a try. So I'm going to show my intro, and when I click start game, I should be able to see three caves because I don't have a random number. And sure enough, I have three caves. Nothing's going to happen with new game. I've got start game there. Now, okay, now that you know that it really works, you can come back and you can change this, this three to a random number and we can just keep testing it. So I'm going to put in a range here, so random.randint. And you can determine your range. Now I don't want to have less than three caves. That wouldn't be that interesting. And maybe I don't want to have more than eight, more than seven. You know, you can kind of just determine a number that you would like for your range. And now we can test it to see that we're getting different random caves. So I'll start a new game. And then if I click starting new game, now, you know, things are happening, but it's like, hmm, I just seem to be appending to my list and not really starting over again. This is something that we've talked about in our other list programs, and there are several ways that we know of how to, to um, fix that. One thing we can do is just always empty our list out before we append, because append, you know, that's kind of a tricky thing, isn't it? It just keeps appending. It doesn't start over again unless we start our list over again. So I can come in here and X position, spell it correctly, oops, yeah. And I could just make it an empty list. And my items, I can make it an empty list before I start to append. So I've got a global right here. I'm starting it over again. And then I can append fresh. Now when I try it, 
and I start my new game, if I click keep start clicking start new game, I should get different numbers. Anywhere from my three to seven. So we've done some really good testing. We've got everything working to this point, and now we're ready to do our click. Okay, now looking at our algorithm, our next task is to determine if a, click, a cave was clicked on. And we're going to be doing this with the mouse click event handler method or function. So this can get a little tricky, so I'm going to give you the code for this and then just explain what is going on. We're going to come here to this get it, and this is going to be uh, determine if our cave was clicked on. So this is our mouse click event here. Now it's going to, to pass, it's going to have a, an argument passed into it, which is called pause. This is the position of the mouse. So down here, we have our mouse click handler. It's going to call get it. And what it's automatically going to return is the position, the X and Y position of where my mouse is clicking. So that's going to be my pause. And it's actually a tuple or it's a list with just two values, X and Y. That's automatically going to get passed into here. So this must have a parameter, pause, which is the position of the mouse click. Let's take off the pass here. And here's going to be what the code looks like. Now I've got a new variable called clicked. And I'm going to use this as kind of like a status or a level. It's going to, I'm going to use it to determine if I am clicking on something. And if I am, what's the index of the cave? So I'm starting click at negative 1 which would be no cave. I'm not starting it at zero because remember I do have a cave zero. I, my index is start at zero. So I'm using a negative number. So if clicked, so I'm starting off clicked as n I'm not clicking on anything. So that's what the negative number indicates. Now I'm going to have to go through the loop to check each cave to see if it has been clicked on. So here's my index starting at zero to however many caves I have. So that's what I'm going to have the len x pause. So this is my loop. Now what I'm going to do is this pause right here. This is the mouse click X. Okay, So pause 0 is the mouse click X. And then um, pause 1 is the mouse click Y. Okay, So what I'm going to do is compare the position of the mouse click to the position of every cave. And that's why I have to do it in a loop. So I'm going to take the first cave, which is index 0, and then I'm going to just have to subtract the size of it because this is in the middle. And I need to know if the position is greater than the, the left side and less than the right side. So this is these are the this is the one edge and this is the other edge. So I'm just clicking to see if the X is inside the two edges. Then I do the same thing with Y. So here's the upper limit and here is the lower limit. I just check to see if it's inside there. So if my position of the mouse click is inside any of these caves, it's going to return the index of the cave that it's in. So that's you know, just the handy way of using a list to know which cave. Otherwise, you'd be kind of like stuck, which you know, I might have clicked on something. If you, have, if you only have one object, then you don't have to do this. But if you have several objects, you need to, uh, to find a way to know which object did you click on? So I can return the index because I'm checking each cave um, by traversing the list. Then I'm going to call another function here and I'm going to pass in clicked. So if it's a negative one, it knows that I didn't click on anything. And if it's anything other than a negative one, it's going to be the index of the cave that I clicked on. So I'll give you a, a couple minutes. You can pause the video as you need to and get all this typed and you have to be really careful. This is kind of tricky code right here because um, you've got um, the list of the cave, but then you've also got the position, which has its own little index as well. So it can be pretty tricky and you want to just make sure that you're not getting any errors when you are um, typing this up. Then we're going to work on find stuff. And this is going to um, just check. So I'm going to know what I clicked on. And then just using an if statement, I can go through and uh, find out what was in the list. Now, you should have tested everything up to this point, And we're looking at our algorithm. 
and we can highlight this part. We have determined if a cave is clicked on. Let's go ahead and highlight that. Now we need to display the result of the click. Now remember when we did determine if a cave was clicked on, we have we indicated the index and we called another function and passed that information in. That's going to help us um, display the result. So let's go back to our code here. We're going to be going to the find stuff function. Now we need to pass in, we're going to have a parameter here, clicked. So up here where we were finding the stuff, find stuff, we're going to pass in clicked, which is the index of the cave that it's clicked on. And it's going to be negative one if nothing was clicked on. So the first thing we have to determine is, is clicked at least a zero. So I've got here, if clicked is greater than or equal to zero, because if it's a negative number, nothing was clicked on, and basically we don't want anything to happen. Now I'm going to be changing some variables, so remember everything that you change you need to make global. So I've got a list of them up here. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the status to three, because I no longer want to show the caves. Now that I've clicked on a cave, I need to change the status so I can display the results. So once again, status is going to come in really helpful. So I'm changing the status, one was for the intro, two is showing the caves, three is going to show the results of the cave. So I changed the status, and then what I'm, the, remember clicked is the index. So whatever the index is, I'm going to go to the items list, and that's going to be a number from zero to whatever I indicated. I'm going to um, assign that to thing. Now I don't have to, I could just keep it items click, but I think it's just easier um, in the rest of your code if I just refer to it as thing. So if the thing is zero, if I look back at my display here, zero was an empty cave, one was a dragon, two was trolls, and three was number of coins. Now you can change this up, so what, whatever you determined the numbers to mean, that's what you're going to be doing here. So for me I had zero was the cave was empty, and I'm assigning this to a message that I will do, be displaying and with a draw text. And if thing was one, I had the message a dragon was inside. If thing was two, trolls, and for, for three, or, or I just have an L, so for anything else, I'm going to say how many coins. And remember, I just do my string here with the thing. Now, I also have a couple things going on. If the trolls stole your coins, I wanted to set the coins back to zero, or I have to accumulate the coins. Okay. So I've got, I do have a little bit of math going on here besides the message. And then I've got something going on here for the wait, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But I am setting the time of when this is happening. So this is going to be my old time that I'm going to compare to the new time. So I do have a variable here. And notice this is just getting the time from the computer. What is the current time right then? Okay. So this is going to just set the message, but I still off right here. We haven't talked about that. I still haven't talked about displaying that. Well, that's just going to be down here in our show inside. And right now we have pass. I'm going to, of course, put canvas in here. And then I'm going to have a bunch of draw text. So it's going to be similar to this. I'm going to have a bunch of draw texts, but I'm just going to um, give a different message. I'm going to say um, how many coins he has. So I'm going to give you some time here to just kind of determine how you might want to display what they found. So your inside show inside might look something like this. I just added a couple lines of text. You can keep it pretty simple. And of course yours can be anything, but you are going to use message. Maybe you want to display how many coins they have. And then we're going to call this wait function. So this one's something kind of new. And we're going to go over this. But after we're displaying here, uh, the caves don't show anymore. And we want to give the person time to read the message. And then we want the next round of caves to show up. So we're going to have a, a little wait delay that's going to wait some time, two seconds, three seconds. You can determine the amount of time. And then set the caves all over again. Uh, now, um, we want to test the show inside, even without the wait, because the wait um, has a pass, so we're going to be okay right there. That means we're going to have to come into draw. Now we have another status. Remember that up in here, when we did the find stuff, we changed the status to three. And for three, we want to call show inside. So let's go ahead and add that in. And we can test our code. So status equals equals three. 
then we're going to do show inside and remember to pass in canvas as your parameter. So we should be able to run this. We have our um, intro, we have our start game, we click on a cave, and it tells me that I gathered six coins. Now it's staying right here because weight doesn't have any code yet. What do we want weight to do? Well, we want it to set the caves all over again. So it's kind of like starting a new game. But what new game did or what start game did was set the caves and the status. So we can do this in our wait. We could also just call start game. Okay, because it already does it. So reusing our code is always a good thing. I'm going to come in here to wait and the main thing here is to use the timer. Okay, so let's put in some code here. Now, old time is something that I set okay, when I found the stuff. Okay, so see right here, it's the time, whatever happened right at that click, it's the time on the computer. And then I'm going to have, um, I'm not really using this new lock, so I'm going to take it off right now. But I am going to update this data. So I have the now time, which is whatever is the current time. So the computer, the clock on the computer is always running. And it's going to be doing it in like milliseconds. So it's going to go, 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 go. Every time I'm just going to keep, it's going to be like in this infinite loop basically, setting the new time. But I'm going to be checking if the now time minus the old time is greater than two. That means two seconds have gone by. So this is my time. You can set this number to whatever you want. You could have two and a half seconds. You could have three seconds. You can have less. You can have more. But this is just my weight. It's not going to do anything until... The now time minus the old time is at least this number. Then when that happens, I can set the caves and status, or I can just call my start game. Okay. So I might as well reuse our code. And that should do it. So let's give this a try. So I'm going to have my intro, have my start game. I'm going to click on a cave. It's going to wait. Okay. Click on a cave, wait, click on a cave, wait. Okay. So we've gone through most of the game. What we haven't done is just determined if we're winning or losing. I've got 30 coins now, so that's pretty good. A troll hasn't come to get my coins yet. It's just going to keep going because we haven't won or lost. I haven't even got any dragging yet. There is the troll. I'm back to zero. And there was a dragon. He ate you, but I'm still going. So take a look at our algorithm again. I can display. I can wait. I've done all of this. So the last thing now is check to see if you win or lose and display the proper message. So how can we determine if we win or lose? Take a look at your code. Where in here do you think that you would do that? And so I can kind of check here if I'm getting my stuff. I can determine um, have I reached my goal. Okay, so if my coins is greater than or equal to goal, that's good. Or if there was a dragon inside here, that's not good. Okay. And so I think one of the easiest ways to determine when or to keep track is to once again throw in a variable. So I called my variable win lose. Okay. So I'm going to come up here and we can just make it zero as you're not winning or losing. And a positive number can mean you win and a negative number could mean you lose. So I can come over in here. I can check it out if I'm finding my stuff. And I can just determine, you know, if coins is greater than or equal to goal, what would that mean? Well, I can set my win-loss to 1, okay? And then where I have my dragon, if he ate you, I could set my win-loss to a negative 1. 
Now, if I'm changing my value of win loss, you want to make sure that you do global. And then I can have a status again. I can have, I've got statuses one, two, and three already. So status four could be for winning and status five could be for losing. I could add in some more so I could show win, show lose. I could change the status. Now, where will I change the status? Well, one place that you could do it is here. I can also just check it right here because this is changing my status anyways. Remember, start game changes my status to two, but I can keep checking. So if win, lose equals equals one, status equals four. If win lose, oops, equals equals five, status equals five. Oops, negative one right here. So if it's a 1, I can set the status, and if it's a negative 1, I can set the status. And then the last thing I'm going to do down here, I'm going to add into my, my draw. So I have if status equals 4, I'm going to show win, and if status equals 5, um, show lose. And then I have to add a couple more functions, one for show win and one for show lose, and whatever I want to happen there. So I'll let you finish this up, and then also I'll let you determine how you should uh, do the new game. What do you need to do in new game? You can check out the algorithm, just kind of remember what you need to do. So this is as far as I'm going to take you, and I'm going to let you finish this game, and then anytime you have, you want to you know, add some more things to it. So you might notice that I added some more pictures, I added um, some other things that I was keeping track of as I went along. Uh, you can change the numbers up, have more random things, it's just um, an infinite number of possibilities of cool things that you can do with this game.